Welcome back, everybody. I'm Kim. And I'm Nate. And this is Amuse Goose. Last episode, we were talking about dream jobs. And at the end of the episode, we were kind of just chatting about um, jobs that we had when we were younger and how much we hated them. They were really awful. Mm -hmm. Like we were we were wrapping mm -hmm. up. Uh, the last one we were talking about was working for the call center for Eddie Bauer. Um, it's terrible. It was it was really bad. Their clothes are nice, but their customer calls their call center, customer contact center, whatever whatever they called it back then. Um, mm -hmm. The supervisors there, terrible people, terrible people, <laughs> terrible <laughs> values. Loved, oh, they terrible. loved just to shit on young people who were just trying to pay their phone bills because that's all the bills yeah. that I had back then. It was really just gas and phone. Yeah, and um, I had to pay my insurance, my car insurance too, and my internet. Oh right, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of bills growing up. I, um, you did. I had yes. to help help uh, a little bit, but. Mm hmm. Anyways, and you said you worked so, retail yeah. as well for a bit. I did. I worked Selling quite a bit of retail. Clothes. Clothes. Yeah. Kind of clothes. Um. Uh. So I did um Reitman's. So ladies. Oh, okay. Um, I remember the name of it, but I can't like picture mm -hmm. it. Yep. Is that still around? Uh, I did. Uh, yes, it is actually, and it's still really. It's just like a Such kind chain? of. Yep, and it's oh. kind of like a middle of the road. They don't do anything crazy, but it's some nice basics. Like Loafers? I still. No, I still really like their t-shirts. They wash really well, and they're very nice t-shirts. Anyway, oh. um, I also did Northern Reflections, which was a little bit ah. more for the ma mature ladies. Um, what does that mean? Maybe some. What's, what's a mature lady? I don't know. I have like, never gotten to that point in my life yet, so I'll let you know if I ever get there, but I can't see it happening. Like, um, are we back at the loafer talk? Yes. Yeah, totally uh, okay. loafer that now loafer we're ladies? into loafer territory. Loafer ladies. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I worked there. Where else did I work? Um, and then I went away for university. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I yeah. worked at a clothing store um, called, I, it, this clothing store does not exist anymore. It's a clothing store in England and it was called Quiz. And that was, it was like barware. Like, oh, okay. Like, like yeah, like for, for clubbing. It was like clubbing clothes. Um, it's a very specific mm -hmm. niche, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So that would kind of, I guess, maybe something that would be similar now would be maybe like Urban Planet. I don't know. It's like cheap, mm -hmm. um, trendy stuff. Okay. It was a lot of, it, you know, it was cute stuff. I got a good uh -huh. discount. So, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Where else did you work? You oh I, I did, you did retail. You did a I retail did store. I remember shoe store. I sold it shoes. Was. You did. Yeah, I um. He was like Al Bundy, guys. <laughs> it's funny the guy at work calls me Al Bundy because <laughs> you know, he he also really? he also knows that I I worked at a, a shoe store, but oh yeah, no, uh, that was that was my first job. I think I was getting like six dollars and change an hour. Mm -hmm. um dating myself um but my first yeah, no I, I, it was I learned a lot 714 was minimum wage when i started at the pharmacy 714 wow you're a late bloomer mm -hmm. so you're already in the seven dollar range yeah i see yeah, minimum wage was like six and change when i started Something or like maybe maybe i got more than minimum wage anyway anyway so you worked there which is still a fantastic store by the way is this still there yeah, it's still there. Exact same place. Same dank carpets, or do they actually yep. update everything? Same oh, carpets. Same Probably carpets. Probably smells the same too. Oh, and the in the little kids area that's like shorter than everywhere else, it's the exact same like shag carpeting on the walls. Yeah, because it's the best the best prices in town for kids shoes. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I still go there. That's that's wild. It's yeah. I wonder if like the, there was another guy that worked there. I wonder if he still mm -hmm. works there. If he if he just left, he did like everything. 
he's a I don't want to say kind weird. of jack he's of all a, jack yeah, of all trades. He was a different different guy. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. I lurked. That, that kind of like I was a very quiet kid growing up, so that kind of started the whole you know break me out of my my shell sort of thing. Um, yeah, you were quiet. Open, it helped me open up a little bit more instead of just being this like quiet kid that uh, was afraid to talk to anyone you know it's i'm sure it's very interesting so a lot of our uh a lot of our listeners are probably people from uh the gaming community um from if anybody doesn't know nate is a streamer and someday i hope now that we're talking about jobs i hope that nate gets to do that professionally i hope that you know you are able to make an income that is significant enough that you can cut off all the rest of your, the work yeah, the, because the, the actual the big job the the tiring yes job. yeah because you're very good um you're very good at streaming you're very good at content creation and stuff like that i think it would be very i think it'd be great for you if you could do that um so anyway circling back <laughs> people who people are probably coming from the community so you know you you know nate from that and you know him as this goofy sort of outgoing guy. However, he was not always like that. So when Nate and I were kids, he was very, very quiet. And I think I always felt like I overwhelmed you. Like I Probably kind of did, have yeah. always I've always been sort of like up here. <laughs> like, yeah. um, but you were, yeah, you were way more quiet and just like very polite. And now you're a jerk. So like, I feel I like learned I've learned a lot a from in- you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've, I've been a great influence on you. Mm-hmm. You've been a great something, great something. <laughs> Talking about the uh, streaming or the content creation stuff um, as like a job. I don't think like, um, like, cause right now, like the stuff I do is, um, you know, I do a little bit of reviews, but it's mostly like. Um, gaming related stuff that's not exactly why i do it is to play the games i enjoy video games i have a lot of fun playing them um Mm -hmm. but it's more just like the the entertainment side of it like i like to make people laugh that's always been something i've i've always tried to make people happy if they were in a bad mood or you know they're upset or sad i wanted to see them happy versus sad and i always felt like compelled to try to mm-hmm. make things better. Um, and then once I got in, like I thought live streaming or recording videos and stuff was like the dumbest thing. When um, my buddy uh, <laughs> told me, he's like, yeah, you should do that. You like video games, right? Um, I thought uh, it was the dumbest out thing. Here. Shout out to Cryptic Fox on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You can check him out on Cryptic Fox mm-hmm. Gaming on YouTube if you guys like video games. He does um, a lot more than I do. I don't know how he does it. Um, but he's the one who kind of pushed me to get into it. And eventually I kind of like, yeah, you know, whatever, I'll try it. I'll give it a, give it a whirl. And, um, I just had a lot of fun doing it. Um, even now, like I, you know, we've built up a, you know, decent channel and, you know, we're, we're doing okay. And we get people popping in new people all the time. And it's, it's neat to see all these people. And when they write to me, um, after the fact, some days, like, I'll get, you know, DMs, and they're just like, you know, thank you so much for, you know, tonight. Um, you know, you made me laugh um, a ton. I uh, had a really rough day, and that kind of got my mind off of things. And that's the kind of reason why I keep doing it is um, people appreciate it. And, you know, if I can make someone stay um, just by being a goof online or Mm -hmm. joking around and just trying to lift people up and just giving some people just someone to talk to um, because we have a pretty pretty cool community and I've been very protective of it um, and I want to make sure everyone feels like they're welcome so whenever we get any a-holes in the chat or anything like that they're gone pretty quick I get a couple Mm -hmm. chances to correct their behavior and if they don't do it then they're out Um, then they deal with the mods the mods (laughs) But yeah, no, and it's the neat. the mods like, are the real. You don't want to deal with the mods. She's drinking wine, guys. She's mm. drinking par for the course. But that would be a cool. I think that would be kind of a cool job. Would be something in the entertainment um, industry, whether it be, um, you know, doing uh, interviews of some sort, or even like a 
like a podcast or a radio show or something like that, I think would be Mm -hmm. neat to do it um, as a living. A lot to learn. The other thing was voice acting. A lot of people told me that uh, I I have a face for radio. So at first I'm like, oh, yeah, thanks. That's good. And then I'm like, oh, a face for radio. Mm, just, mm-hmm. But um, apparently I kind of have more of a radio voice, which you I, do. Can, you have I guess I can kind of hear it. I can hear it. Um, mm-hmm. Like I, I, now I listen when I'm listening to the radio. I'm like, I see what they're saying. Um, and I have fun with it. I just like to goof off mm-hmm. and make stupid voices and they'll they'll come out eventually, I'm sure. You'll hear my mm-hmm. st- oh yeah, mm-hmm. stupid voices. But um, his wife, of- his wife Ellie, will request a pirate voice at some point. Um, uh-huh. So you'll get to you'll get to hear that, and it's it's lovely. Um, it's great, but it would be great for you, like if you were able to kind of pivot to this field, this sort of uh, you know streaming content creation, podcasting, hosting, interviewing, voice mm-hmm. acting. You know, it kind of all falls under that that entertainment umbrella and you don't necessarily have to put one you know sort of one title on it or one you don't have to pick one thing you get to kind of play around and every day can be different which i think for you uh, i don't think that you would be happy um just sitting and doing the same thing over and over and over and over again all day every day no and like you know like if it was like a radio show it's a little bit different because you if you had guests i would have to do it where we had guests that's the only way i could think that i would be or just a really good like co-host like i know Mm -hmm. absolutely nothing about that world i've never looked into it i've never done anything same with like the 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 voice acting um thing like that's something that i want to start up this year um just start to kind of get a demo reel together um and just Mm kind of put what i do know together um and just start just see what happens just throw it out there and see where it goes um but yeah we'll see we'll see what what goes on otherwise Mm -hmm. you know i have i i do have a decent job now it's an okay job i don't love it i'm not miserable there but i'm not like hey i love my job i can't wait go to go back to work it's like i gotta work today today." you know what i mean like i i don't i don't really i don't know i don't love it it's yeah it pays the bills um it pays more than you know um i guess the average around where i am um, benefits are pretty decent. So, you know, I can't, can't complain too much, but I'll complain just enough that, uh, makes me happy that I'm complaining <laughs> about happy it. Happy to complain. Yep. What would you, so obviously you have your, your wine store, but mm-hmm. if you could do mm-hmm. anything now, now that you're all grown mm-hmm. up and you've done the yeah. things, what, if you could well, do anything, anything at all, didn't matter. What would you do? Do you know, so I worked um, a couple of years ago before I had kids and stuff, I worked in the funeral industry. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an inbound call center. I was taking calls, um, when funeral homes would be closed, they would put their, their phones over to the, the call center. And then that way they could get, you know, they could get a break and any, um, you know, if something happened that they needed to be, uh, contacted right away, we would contact them. But if they were just, you know, little things um, that they, people could leave messages, that way the funeral directors weren't on call 24-7. Um, mm-hmm. And I really, really enjoyed the funeral industry. And I think if I had the opportunity, um, I might go back into that, not in a call center sort of way, but directly at maybe a funeral home um, or something in that field um Mm -hmm. there's something about being there for someone when they are having the worst day of their life because a lot of times that is that's the worst day of your life when somebody you love uh passes away um there's something about being there for them in that and saying i've got this um Mm -hmm. i'm gonna take care of this here's what i i just need you know i just need your your name your phone number whatever um their the person's name and i'm gonna i'm gonna take care of that for you um i'm really sorry that this is happening to you i'm gonna i'm gonna take it from there and you don't have to worry i'll let you know as soon as you know and and we were very uh with wording you know we would say your loved one 
Like we're going to take your loved one into our care. We would never say like, I'm going to go pick them up from the morgue and bring them to the funeral home. It was, we're going to bring your loved one into our care. And, you know, being able to say like, they're not going to be, they're not going to be left alone. There's always going to be somebody there or um, reassuring a family member that, that I've got it handled, whatever they needed. Like mm-hmm. some people will call at like two o'clock in the morning. It was a 24 hour thing. I worked overnights, which I actually really enjoyed. Um, at two o'clock in the morning, they were like, oh, my mom really wanted Amazing Grace played at her funeral. I just, I was thinking about it right now. I wanted to call and let you know. And all I really was doing was taking that message and sending it to the funeral director who was dealing with the funeral and saying mm-hmm. she really wants Amazing Grace. Like, um, give her a call back in the morning when you're in the office and just let her know that that's, that's fine or whatever. But there was something about being there for somebody in that moment and assuring them that I was going to do that for them that I really, that yeah. I really liked. Um, also I'm really a, a morbid person. So I had the opportunity to cremate a lady and that was pretty freaking cool. I'm not going to lie um we're still talking about the funeral home right like this wasn't like some extracurricular <laughs> this just wasn't like in a this wasn't like a side <laughs> thing and you just jumped at the chance i'm gonna burn no. this bitch <laughs> no that was like okay. at you know at the camp in a bonfire like she just happened just, to walk by just pushed, her, pushed her in um yeah like, so i i really that field that death care field mm. um caring for some caring for somebody's person and trying to make them look as much like themselves or Mm -hmm. you know we got we had we had to work at a funeral home in town um every so often we all like everybody in um everybody that worked at the at the call center had to take turns um doing uh we would usually do two days at a time at the funeral home um Mm -hmm. and i really enjoyed that part of it i don't know if that makes me super weird does um I never, so in New Brunswick, to be a funeral director, you have to also do the embalming. Like you have to do everything. You do pickup, you do embalming, you do burials, prepping for the funeral, burials. You do, well, no, you don't have to do burials. The (laughs) graveyards do those. Um, You do uh, cremations, you do hair, makeup, like you're everything. Yeah. Um, In a lot of other places, yeah, in, in a lot of other p- places, there is an embalmer and that's all they do is they embalm bodies. And then somebody else does hair and makeup and somebody else meets with the families. Um, I never thought that, especially back when I was like coming out of high school, I, it was something that I considered going into um, the funeral industry. I didn't think at the time that I would have the stomach, I guess, to do the embalmings mm-hmm. like I would have to do here. Now, um, looking back, maybe I wouldn't have been able to do it at the time, but I think I could, I could do it now, especially after having two kids, I, like the blood and guts you see. Kids? Oh. No. See, like, just like. I got really desensitized to stuff like that from working in the cemetery. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I lost a lot of people growing up to cancer. Cancer was a big thing in my family. Um, yeah. So. I, I guess I wasn't like a really like a stranger to death and just by chance, like this wasn't a dream of mine or whatever. I just, I had an opportunity to work in a cemetery. So I'm like, well, yeah, it pays well. I'll do that. No idea what to expect. And then I ended up spending, I think it was like three, three and a half years working in the cemetery. Yeah, you were there from... for quite a while. Mm-hmm. I loved it when you were there. <laughs> yeah. She'd always, she'd always want pictures of like the old stones. Yeah. yeah, I love I I really enjoy going to graveyards just to walk around and look at some of the old stones. I Could care clean less. them. Couldn't yeah. even didn't even oh care God. at all about the history oh of so a couple dead of years people. a couple of years ago, uh a few years ago I went to visit Nate and I made him take me to the cemetery. Yeah. That yeah, was one of the older ones. It was, mm-hmm. it was, I love it's, like yeah, it's a pretty cemetery. It's not bad. They're beautiful. They're peaceful. Mm-hmm. Nobody's talking to you. I mean, maybe just in your head a little bit, but you can tell them to be quiet. The crazy thing is like, 
what people don't understand when you when you're actually burying a body it's not nice like in the movies no like no. at all it's it's kind of it's kind of gruesome like they'll spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a casket or a vault which is basically mm-hmm. a a container that you put the casket in. It's usually made out of concrete or like a combination of concrete and like this plastic that seals it up. Like people are spending all this money and they're like, well, you know, it's guaranteed to be sealed for a hundred years. Why would you want that? I guess no. like, I don't understand it. Like I'm very like, they're dead. They're gone. They're that That's it. Like you're spending all this money. And this is just my perspective. You believe something else. Hey, that's on you. That's, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, here to put down any other thing but the way i look at it is like they're dead they're gone and even like Mm -hmm. a lot of the the religious views is like yeah they've gone to you know the easiest one is like you know they've gone to heaven they've gone to here they've gone to there it's like so why are you protecting the body if they're gone Yeah, because because decomp happens oh yeah doesn't matter yeah we've we've found some of that yeah if you're in a cardboard box you're you're going to decompose and Mm -hmm. if you're in a six thousand dollar Rolls Royce ca- uh, casket. You're you're going to decompose, e- embalmed yep. or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, just um, a matter of time, right? It's just nothing else will join you in there outside of what's already in your body. But it um, will, though. Mm, well, I mean, like just whatever's in that box, like the sealed ones. I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Old, yeah not the casket. The casket. Um, yeah, they're 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 done. They're gone. We would we <laughs> yeah, would. Uh, yeah it have so many issues where you're you're digging a, a grave because they're very close together and yeah you know um sometimes you'd, you'd have a cave in and like the neighbor comes to say hello and mm-hmm. you have to be like you know we're very respectful and you know, oh yeah 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 it, it can't be helped like some of the ground is just so um like unstable that you just have to go back and kind of you know gently you know put them back where they should be um, mm-hmm. but sorry, Mr. Not, Smith here, go yeah, back not, to your side. It's not something you think of. Like that's, that's no. for sure. It's not something that's and in I your hope, uh, back of your head. Yeah. I hope we're not making anyone uncomfortable. i um, talking about this sort of thing. This, uh, this is very normal for me to talk about, um, Same. and, and normal for me to talk about tonight because of the nature of that job. Um, so uh, yeah, I hope we're not making anybody uncomfortable. Um, I kind of want some now, people to be uncomfortable. Like, if you deserve to be uncomfortable, I want you uncomfortable. Yeah, if you're a bad person and you're listening to this, I hope you're uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hope you ruin um, your day. Now, with your job now, so in that in that job, you would find little treasures or pieces of people. Um, yeah. <laughs> in your job now, or uh, you find, you know, maybe some not so pleasant uh things that people leave around um i think you had said you uh maybe not where you're at now but uh like you had to clean up a lot of garbage a lot of needles that people were leaving around so that's no fun either but it no. is also a, by- a byproduct of you know human nature Dickheads. yeah that yeah yeah we um a lot of garbage, a lot of leftover stuff mm-hmm. yeah. Um, that they leave behind and they don't care about and just trash. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but it so is here, what it is. Yeah. Here's a question for you. What was your favorite job that you've had already? It's a good question. Uh, you know what? I liked, there was a time, so I worked at another call center when I was older um, and There was a time when it was still a new company. Mm -hmm. So they had that like startup, happy go lucky, let's do this. We're, you know, we're together, we're a family, let's have, you know, pizza parties and and social gatherings and let's spend money on this, let's buy you guys that, bonuses, raises, you know, all that stuff. And it was just a very light, like it was still a call center. I I hated being on the phone, so I was only on the phones for about like I don't know, nine months of my time there. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was looking for work while I was in training, but I, j- I needed a job, so I took a job, you know. Um, but the job, like, I, m- I met some really cool people there. Some are still, like, my best friends. 
and I just I learned a lot and more just business um type mindset there versus like you know just going working in the retail that I used to work at or doing this job or just laboring or you know all that stuff so I learned a lot more there on how to just deal with people and work Mm. with people um you know I worked my way up to a management position and you know pay was good but uh, I was miserable in the end because it was still a call center and they wanted us to uh, you know treat some people poorly because they weren't hitting mm-hmm. certain targets they're you know like i don't know there's a lot of shady stuff in the end when i ended up leaving there i didn't like what they were doing were i didn't like where the company guy. i was an office guy now i'm an outside you were like, an office guy put me in a put me a piece of equipment and i i love operating heavy equipment i have a lot of fun doing that my mm-hmm. current job doesn't allow for a lot of heavy equipment it's a lot of like um lighter equipment um so i'm not in the excavators and you know, dozers and stuff like that anymore. But, uh, so it kind of sucks. I, you know, I do miss that, that sort of thing, but around where I am, there's not a lot of jobs where you're home every day, you know, Monday to Friday, I work a steady shift, you know, I clock in, I clock out and I only worry about work when I'm there. When I leave work. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be like, ah, I got to do this job tomorrow or whatever. But for the most part, I'm not taking anything home with me. I don't have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. working late unless i want to i don't have to work overtime it's optional right yeah um and we don't we don't have a lot of overtime anyways so but hey it's not it's not too bad it's not too bad like you you have your wine store now like would you mm-hmm. say you're really enjoying it is it what you thought it would be or is it more or um it's like it's definitely different than i thought it would be i guess there's a, a huge learning curve owning your own business um because i don't own a franchise i don't like i like i literally i'm it like i just Mm -hmm. i have to make all the decisions there's no book that tells me what to do i just have to wing it all the Mm -hmm. damn time which is very frightening however there's only been one day um that i've ever felt like i it was work okay like that's good like even to Like today we were like, my dad is my only employee. It's just me and dad. Secret worker. What's like, if you had to give, do you do performance reviews? You should do every once in a while. I should do every once in a while. I'll post on social media that he got employee Uh of the month. Like everyone, I put his picture up. I put a little graphic. I'm like employee of the month. And he thinks that's so funny. Um, But yeah, it's really I don't feel like it's work. Like even That's today nice. we're busy. We're like doing all kinds of stuff. And afterwards I'm like, I was just thinking like, well, that was fun. Like mm-hmm. nobody leaves, nobody leaves my store with 30 bottles of wine and being like, damn it. I hate these 30 bottles of wine, like mm-hmm. that sort of thing. So yeah, it's, it's, it's different. It's a lot more there's a huge learning and i'm still learning i've almost it's almost been a year april will be a year since i've owned it um but i still really like it i still really enjoy it i'm learning something every day which is really cool now see i i don't know what that's like i've never had that um me neither yeah Um, so that's that's awesome i'm really i'm really happy that you know that's working in that direction for you that's really cool I like not having a boss. Like I'm the boss. I like some, sometimes, <laughs> you know, sometimes if it's a crappy day outside and nobody's been in and I'm like, it's like half an hour until we're supposed to close. I'm like, I'm just going, I'm just going home. It's my, I, who's going to tell me? No, not me. Cause I'm going home. So, you know, and then it's, yeah, it's just kind of cool to like work with my dad. My mom helps me out every once in a while. She'll come up and do some cleaning and stuff, whatever she putters around and wants to do. So it's a lot of fun um, now, but I will, I have to mention, I have hmm. to mention it. We have yes. not discussed Uh-oh. another job, another job that I've loved that I had. I've, I've, stripper. Had a, I've Oh no, I have not been a stripper. Um, oh, okay. I worked at a camp. I worked at a campground. Um, that was fun. Did you? Uh, yeah. Oak Point. Oak Point. That sounds yeah, familiar, but I can't. Here, I've been. I've been away Brown's, for so in, long. In Brown's Flat. Oh. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I worked there. Browns. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. I I worked there with my bestie. Um, at the time. 
And I, I still love her. I don't know why I said at the time, but uh, and then sorry, bestie. Um, I uh, oh, and then when I was away for university, Nate's favorite thing that I like to mention: I worked for Manchester United. Say it proper, the way that you told me. <laughs> <laughs> when you were living there, no, when you came back from living there and you were talking about it, say it proper. Otherwise, I, I'm shutting it Manchester, down. I'm stuck. Manchester United. Manchester United. That's how she would say it. <laughs> and like she would talk Canadian. No. Just English, like just normal talking. And then she would talk about Manchester United. And she this accent popped out of nowhere. And then right back to normal Kim talk. I'm like, what the heck was that? She's like, so what? you know what's it, well, it was really weird. So it was weird because I lived over there for three and a half years. Uh huh. So it's you know obviously you're going to pick up a little bit of their cadence, their mannerisms, yeah, it's gonna and, and different things. So I worked in the office. I was in staffing. So I booked uh, staff for like the bars and things. And mm-hmm. we, you know when we would answer the phone, when staff would call, I would be listening to all these people answer the phone. Manchester United, whoever speaking. So I'm hearing them all the time say it like that. And mm. I'm like, you know what? You know, you kind of absorb that. Yep. And then you turned into a Manchester United. That's oh, my what you God. Did. That was you. It's not you anymore. You've, uh, you've come back. I'm, you've come back to us. I've, I have come back. We've, yes. mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. We fixed the accent. Okay. But we're, yeah. we're there. Like time flies. Time I flies know, when with you're these, having uh, fun. these chats. When we're talking about death, I think I think I want to know and... more about uh, England and what you did over there. Can we do that in the next okay. episode? Then maybe. Yes, we can Just do that. We can travel. talk about England. Mm-hmm. Wow! Oh yes, the places we love we've travel. gone. The places we want to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So everybody, follow us on social media um, on uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your wherever you listen to your podcasts. We are Amuse Goose Pod everywhere. And uh, we'll see you next time, won't we, Nate? We will. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.